BMW's i4 is a mid-sized EV sports saloon aimed at the very heart of the business sector, a car that incorporates all of the company's traditional brand values, and does so in a way that should appeal to EV customers looking for a more involving individual choice in this segment. The Ice Age, as in internal combustion era, is almost over, and BMW is ready for what lies beyond. This car, the i4, was at launch the most important EV the brand had introduced to date, and there's a good case for calling it the most important BMW for decades. The company has been dabbling with EVs for a very long time now, ever since its Project i Division produced the groundbreaking little i3 back in 2013. After that though, there was a rather disappointing seven year gap at the end of which we got a conventional looking EV version of the X3, the iX3. Uh, then a year later, what looked like a properly dedicated design, the iX, which did in fact merely run on a heavily modified version of the company's combustion orientated CLAR platform. The i4, launched in 2022, isn't designed around a properly bespoke EV platform either. That's coming with the Neuer Klasse EV models that the company is introducing later in this decade, but it's very much a proper BMW, as we're about to find out. When you imagine a proper BMW, the car you tend to think of is a three series saloon. And if you were to conceptualize one of those as an EV, this is pretty close to what you might end up with. Actually, this i4 has a bit more in common with the brand's swoopier 4 Series Grand Coupe, not least because it has a swept back GT silhouette with a tailgate rather than a boot. Anyway, uh, what you need to know is that there's lots of carryover between this i4 and those 3 and 4 Series models, all three designs made at the same BMW Group plant Munich German factory. This car gets the fifth generation of the brand's advanced e-drive system, which incorporates this Bavarian maker's latest battery, motor and charging technologies. And it's intended as a sportier alternative to pricier versions of more established executive mid-sized EV sporting models. Nearly all of them, cars that really were designed from the ground up as EVs, like the Tesla Model 3, the Polestar 2, the Hyundai Ioniq 6, uh, the Kia EV6, and the Volkswagen ID7. We've got the i4 in conventional mid-level e-drive 40 form here, but BMW is also offering it in an M-tuned guise in the form of an uber-rapid i4 M50 model. That flagship version strays into territory occupied by the Munich makers i5 by taking on sporty EV saloons in the next class up, like the Mercedes EQE, the Porsche Taycan and the Audi e-tron GT. All the rivals we've just mentioned claim to be more EV-like than this one, but the Bavarian brand says that none of them retain rewarding combustion-style handling characteristics quite as faithfully as an i4 does. Is BMW right? Well, to find out, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test. If this really is an electric take on BMW 3 or 4 Series motoring, then an awful lot's expected here. Uh, expectations, you might think a car which has to carry around over half a tonne of extra weight would struggle to fulfil. Uh, we'll see. It is certainly fast, even in this volume mid-range E-Drive 40 form, which has a single rear-mounted 340 horsepower motor with 430 newton meters of torque. That combination is capable of propelling the car from 0 to 62 in just 5.7 seconds, which, to give you some perspective, is only a second slower than an M3. Uh, top speed is higher than the EV Norm 2, but far less eye-catching, uh, restricted at 118 miles an hour. Even the base, uh, also rear-driven E-Drive 35 variant, offers 286 horsepower and makes 62 in six seconds dead. All the figures we just quoted assume selection of sport, that's the most urgent of the three provided drive modes. The other two are Comfort and Eco Pro. These settings can activate uh, various fake engine style noises from the included Iconic Sounds electric system. Uh, don't worry, you can switch that off. 
if understandably you're not quite sure why it's necessary for a car of this kind to be quite that fast, uh, then you certainly won't feel the need to find the considerable extra for the range topping i4 M50. That has a dual motor all wheel drive system that develops an enormous 544 horsepower and 795 newton meters of torque. And if you engage uh, the extra provided boost drive mode, which temporarily adds 68 horsepower for push to pass overtaking, it storms past 62 in just 3.9 seconds on the way to 140 miles an hour. Most other mid-sized EV sports saloons costing this kind of money uh, also feel pretty quick in a straight line. As you'd hope though, where this i4 grabs an advantage is when it comes to the twisty stuff. Uh, yes, it is helped by the central battery placement's lower centre of gravity, that's 34 millimetres nearer the deck than a 3 series uh, in this case, but all electric vehicles offer something of the sort. With those other EVs though, that advantage is usually all but cancelled out by the extra clunking battery weight that they have to carry around. Now we've already alluded to the fact this i4 has that too, but its three-drived uh, CLAR chassis is much better at dealing with it. And to that combustion-derived platform has been attached the lift-related dampers and the rear suspension refined over years in that Cousin 3 Series model to a benchmark level of driver engagement. Plus, compared to that car, the i4 has a wider front and rear track width. It's a recipe that can't help but elevate this i4 to a segment leading level of dynamic prowess, and it does. It subjectively melts away the kilos and makes this car more fun to throw through a series of corners uh, than you'd ever imagine an EV could be. In the M50, this is further aided by an electronic rear differential, which varies the amount of drive delivered to each rear wheel. Across the i4 range, it helps further when it comes to handling, but much else here is borrowed from the 3.2, including a near actuator wheel slip limitation for extra turning traction, and for an EV, pretty fearsome servotronic electromechanical steering, along with an integrated braking system that does a good job in combining friction and regenerative braking in a way that feels reasonably natural uh, on the pedal. There are no steering wheel paddles to alter energy regeneration, but uh, light, medium and high screen selectable functions allow you to do that. Or you can just activate the B drive ratio that we mentioned earlier on. Uh, this incorporates an adaptive mode which uses data from onboard sensors and the navigation system too to analyse when it's best for the car to coast or apply stronger braking. Uh, you'll need to make the most of that to get anywhere near this eDrive 40 model's claimed 365 mile range from its 81.5 kilowatt hour battery. The same battery is used by the heavier M50 variant which manages 318 miles of range. Uh, the base eDrive 35 model has a smaller 67 kilowatt hour battery so that delivers a range figure that's restricted to 299 miles. All of those are reasonable, if unexceptional, figures by class standards, and BMW hasn't dropped the ball either when it comes to comfort and highway prowess. Uh, the E-Drive models don't get the M50 version's adaptive damping, that's air sprung at the rear, but you won't miss that too much with these um, mainstream variants. Now true, uh, in this form the i4 doesn't cope with uneven surfaces quite as well as its combustion powered showroom counterparts, but with over two tonnes of weight to carry around, you wouldn't expect it to. Uh, the passive lift related dampers that we alluded to earlier on, uh, they leave the car better placed than its rivals when the Betjeman gets choppy. Uh, clever shock absorbers uh, that incorporate structures which are able to provide extra damping at the extremes of wheel travel. These allow BMW to adopt quite a firm sporting setup, but also one that's able to deliver a fluent ride over tarmac imperfections, uh, which helps on highway trips, which of course are aided by typical EV refinement, uh, although not too impacted here by the kind of wind noise and tyre roar that you would hear with, uh, say, a comparable Tesla Model 3. But if you like your driving, what you're going to remember after a trip at the wheel of one of these most is the handling. Of course, this car isn't quite as agile as the far lighter 3 Series, and there's a bit more cornering lean too, but the i4 gets closer to its sibling in this regard than we ever thought it would. B 
BMW's managed to make the i4 look like a 4 Series Grand Coupe, but at the same time, slightly different. Uh, little touches deliver an EV vibe, especially at the front, but the two designs share the same stretched sporting proportions, short overhangs, slim pillars, and five-door Gran Turismo-style body shape. The two cars are almost identical in length, 4,783 millimetres, uh, 74 millimetres longer than a 3 Series saloon, but this i4's chunky lower battery pack means its roof line is 6 millimetres higher than the 4 Series Grand Coupe. The shared combustion-derived underpinnings mean that this EV has to have an unnecessarily long bonnet. It stretches almost a third of the length of the vehicle before a rakish windscreen leads to a roof line, uh, which quickly slopes back to a rear with a hint of a kick to the tailgate, which is set considerably higher than the leading edge of the bonnet. Uh, there's the brand's traditional Hofmeister kink at the rear of the window line, while EV-ness is uh, delivered by a lower sill strip, which flows into the air curtain slot behind the front wheel arch. And that's a contributor to a slippery drag coefficient of just 0.24 CD. You wouldn't have thought that an electric vehicle would be helped by big wheels, but you get them here anyway. Uh, the rims are either 18 or 19 inches in size. We've got the 19 inch M Y spoke by color jet black alloys on this test car. It's all rather less understated here at the front uh, because this i4 is four series rather than three series derived. You have to have this huge vertical upright kidney grille housing the car's ultrasonic and radar sensors. It's an appendage with aesthetics that are not helped by incorporating EV blanking plates or this centrally mounted number plate. Uh, as usual with uh, BMW design, front bumper styling is dictated by your choice between the restrained look of baseline sport models and the more overt outer intakes of this M Sport version. Each corner is subtly bookended by vertical air intakes. It's all very combustion car-like, uh, a vibe that even extends to the rear where this lower diffuser detailing hints at the missing twin tailpipes. As with the 4 Series Grand Coupe, horizontal lines accentuating the i4's identical width are the dominant theme back here, an effect reinforced by these slim, darkened, full LED tail lights, which extend well into the flanks. Uh, dark finished corner panels extend up from the uh, slim reflectors, and a tiny shark fin aerial is fitted to the roof. Under the skin, the CLAR mixed steel and alloy platform of comparable BMW combustion models is retained with its intelligent mix of steels and alloys, but the brand has tried to reduce its weight through greater use of aluminium, which is used to fashion the bonnet, the side panels and the doors. Right, time to take a look inside. Uh, you might expect trendy pop-out door handles on a premium EV, but here they're conventional flush-fitting touch-sensitive items, which offer access via these light uh, frameless doors. If you've specified the brand's digital key feature and you have a compatible smartphone, you can unlock the car with your handset using near-field communication access technology, uh, which you can share with up to five other users. If your grown-up children happen to be among them, uh, then you can implement a special configuration which restricts the top speed, uh, the engine power, and the maximum radio volume. The Munich maker boasts about how difficult this digital key package's incorporated NFC chip is to hack and has also thought about extra safeguards for the conventional uh, standard key. Uh, a movement sensor is included within the fob to stop it from transmitting when it isn't being carried, so considerably reducing the risk of its signal being picked up by transmitting devices. Get comfortable here at the wheel and you'll find yourself sitting lower than you might expect to in an EV. Uh, like the current 3 Series and like most of BMW's other most recent models, uh, the dash here is dominated by this curved display twin screen media setup. It's a system uh, surrounded by chrome garnished, expensively elegant cabin architecture. The i4 gets blue detailing on its drive selector, uh, but that's positioned where you'd expect to find it. And the lower capstan controller for the central screen, a uh, feature which is missing on most rivals, is defiantly retained here.
All the materials used, even those lower down, are great to look at and touch with classy stitching, thin ambient lighting colour strips and smart metal finishing that feels rich and upmarket, although not so much that the interior might be in danger of assuming a slightly gaudy ambiance. It's certainly a cabin that's worthy of comparison with that of a slightly larger and more expensive Mercedes EQE or Audi e-tron GT. And in quality terms, it's simply leagues ahead of the kind of thing that you get in a more comparably priced rival like, well, say, a Tesla Model 3. The BMW Live Cockpit Plus media features, though, will be the main talking point here. The 12.3-inch instrument display that you view through this lovely chunky three-spoke steering wheel showcases sophisticated graphics uh, customizable via this rotating switch on the right-hand wheel spoke. The content menu determines what you see in the middle of the screen, a digital speedo, journey data, uh, drive assist features, a route preview with a compass, uh, media and radio selections, a g-force meter and GPS mapping. If mapping, you might want to select the third of the three available layout options and that displays your route to the right of a slash across the screen. Uh, the other two layouts give you a choice of either a rev counter or a power meter. All of this is complemented by further customizable settings for the head-up display, if your chosen i4 model uh, features that, of course. There's a choice of standard view, assisted view, or sport view options, all with speed sign recognition. Anything the instrument screen can't tell you, and much that it can, will be found on the joined-in left-hand part of the curved display, a 14.9-inch center dash control display, which is a recipient of the company's latest generation operating system 8 software. All the car's climate functions have been inhaled by that screen, and they sit in a very detailed climate menu, accessible via a virtual button in the center of the lower frame. The right-hand edge of the monitor has shortcut options for media, phone and nav, plus a menu option too, which connects you into a confusing layout full of tiny icons, which is why you'll probably want to stick to the tiled screen that you get when the display first springs into life. Uh, this shows large widget sections, starting with primary features like telephone, radio and mapping, uh, beyond which you can swipe right for things like trip data, weather information, uh, compass settings and traffic conditions. As we said earlier, unlike with other recent installations of BMW's operating system 8 software, a lower capstan controller uh, has been retained here, but you may find it easier to access what you want by gaining mastery of the car's intelligent personal assistant voice control. In our view, it's arguably one of the most advanced systems out there. It can even learn your routines and automate them. Uh, for example, they can lower the driver's window when you reach the ticket barrier each day at your office entrance. And the voice activation element is properly intuitive. You just preface what you want to say with, hey BMW. However you access all the media functions, there's an awful lot to get to grips with and some of the functions are properly cutting edge. Uh, the 4G Wi-Fi hotspot, for example, ideal for TikTok-obsessed teenagers. Uh, plus there's built-in Alexa functionality if you want it and a very good cloud-based BMW Max navigation system which constantly factors in traffic levels along your route. Uh, the these days expected wirelessly accessible Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring is of course built in. Plus this central screen has sections for news, weather and podcasts. Bear in mind that many of the digital services are life limited before becoming chargeable. Uh, quite a few features require access via a BMW ID, which you'll already have if you're using the provided My BMW app, and which you can add to any designated smartphone. So personal interior settings and activated features can be instantly communicated to the car whenever you're driving it. Uh, you can add to that menu of features in the course of your ownership, uh, thanks to over-the-air updates and extra tech that can be purchased via the online connected drive BMW shop. Enough with media tech, uh, what else might you need to know here? Uh, the seats, uh, they turn out to be decently supportive, getting comfortable aided by loads of adjustment for seat and wheel. Uh, the amount of rearward seat travel that you get is particularly generous here, plus they're heated as standard. We don't think it's acceptable though to have to pay extra for lumbar support on a car of this price. Uh, build quality, 
from the Munich plant is predictably faultless and as suggested earlier on it all feels very high-end helped by nice standard touches like this dash covered in uh, stitched Sensitec man-made leather. There's not much you can fault about the cabin ergonomics and we like the fact that the electronic parking brake is properly placed on the centre console rather than being tucked away behind the steering wheel as it is in many rival EVs. Uh, frontward visibility is a little compromised by these wide A pillars here and as with the 4 Series Grand Coupe, over the shoulder view is slightly restricted thanks to chunky rear pillars, although this issue is mitigated somewhat by a whole bank of technology that will help you slot into spaces, all round parking sensors, a rear view camera and a parking assistant to steer you into tight bays, they're all standard. When it comes to cabin practicality, BMW achieves the required class standard, but no more. Uh, both the door bins and glove box are compartmentalized and averagely sized with bottle holders. Uh, the lidded area at the base of the center stack reveals a couple of cup holders, along with a 12 volt port and a USB A point. Plus there's a wireless phone charging mat uh, that can feature here too. A USB-C point can be found in this good sized, nicely lit, lidded box between the seats. An overhead sunglass compartment that's missing, but you do get a flock lined cubby by the driver's right knee and ticker clips too on the sun visors. Let's take a look in the rear. Now, if you've tested a few other EVs in this class, you'll be expecting plenty of room back here, but those cars are usually based on bespoke EV platforms. As we've been saying, this one isn't. And for those who have to sit in the rear, the unfortunate result is a wheelbase length, the same as that of the 4 Series Grand Coupe combustion model. And that is anything but EV-like. Plus these frameless rear doors are also relatively small, making access to the back seats trickier than it ought to be. Even if you didn't know that the i4 isn't constructed on a platform uh, primarily designed for an electric car, you might guess the fact once you're seated back here, not only because of the restricted legroom, but also because of the provision of the sort of big uh, central transmission tunnel you'd think an EV wouldn't have to have. That'll put pay to the idea of being able to take three adults in any sort of comfort back here. And headroom, already tight in this car's 4 Series Grand Coupe Cousin, is fractionally worse still in this case because of the big battery pack you're sitting on. Uh, the front seats also cut into the rear leg space and the footwells aren't particularly deep. In compensation though, you get the kind of premium luxury feel you'd expect from the class above, particularly in a highly specced variant like this one with classy stitched door card finishing. You wouldn't expect this bench to slide on an EV, but you might hope that the backrest would recline like it does on the iX3. It doesn't though. Only the two outside positions come with Isofix attachment points and only the most expensive variants come as standard with a kind of separate three zone climate controls back here, which you might hope would be standardized at this price. If there are only two of you in the rear, you'll be able to use this central armrest with its lidded twin cup holders. Plus you'll be favoured with seat back pockets, a 12 volt port, twin USB-C sockets, overhead reading lights and small partition door pockets incorporating bottle holders. Now we keep talking about the lack of EV chassis here. Another thing you have to do without because of that is the small frunk underbonnet space which uh, many class rivals have for uh, storing the charging cables. Still, the standard powered tailgate rises to reveal a decently sized boot at 470 litres with the seats in place. That's the same as the 4 Series Grand Coupe. Uh, the i4 betters Tesla's Model 3 by almost 50 litres and Hyundai's Ionic 6 and the Polestar 2 by 70 litres. The cargo area has a wide and deep opening. It offers bag hooks and provides small storage spaces on either side. Uh, there is some underfloor storage space for charging cables, but not enough for any sort of spare wheel. So as with most EVs, if you get a flat, you'll be stuck on the side of the road with a tin of sealant. And if you need room for lengthier items, well, with many rivals, you'll be stuck with a conventional seat backrest, which has a 60-40 split. In this i4, the more flexible 40-20-40 backrest, uh, that means you can push longer items like skis in between two rear seated folk. 
If you require even more space and you want to fold the entire rear bench, you'll be annoyed to find that there are no cargo sidewall catches. So you have to go around to the side door and release the catches on top of the seat shoulders. At which point, uh, you will also find that the rear chairs don't fold completely flat. In this position though, uh, 1290 litres of space is freed up. Again, that's the same as the 4 Series Grand Coupe and it's more than is offered by most rivals and it should be ample for most owners. Anyone thinking of the i4 as an electric 3 series should adjust their pricing perspective because it's about £10,000 more than one of those, much more along the lines of a 5 series, although with a bit less space. At the time of filming in spring 2023, the range started from around £50,000 for the base i4 eDrive 35 version with the smaller 67 kilowatt hour battery and around £58,000 upwards for this car, the mid-level eDrive 40 model with its uh, larger 81.5 kilowatt hour battery pack. You need the case, uh, add £1,500 more if you want to progress from base sport trim to this test car's more dynamic looking M Sport spec. Uh, the top uber powerful all wheel drive M50 flagship model, well that required around, uh, well over in fact, £71,000 from you at the time of filming. So how does that value proposition compare to that of obvious segment mid-sized EV rivals? Well, at the time of filming, Tesla's Model 3 started from around £43,000. A Polestar 2, a Tesla Model Y and a Kia EV6 started from around £45,000. And a Hyundai Ioniq 6 from around £47,000. So an i4 will require a slight premium if you are considering any of those. But it's at about the same pricing point as a Ford Mustang Mach-E or a Genesis GV60. Spending more on your i4? Well, upper spec variants like this one might be considered as rivals for cars like the Lexus RZ450e, the Genesis GB70 Electrified, or BMW's own iX3, all of which are up at around uh, £65,000. A Jaguar I-Pace or an Audi Q8 e-tron require from around 70000 if you're thinking of the top i4 M50, then you're into the kind of £75,000 price point that would get you an EV sports saloon from the next class up, like a Mercedes EQE or a Porsche Taycan. Running through that little list reminds us, as BMW is keen to point out, that there's nothing quite like the i4 in the EV segment. If you agree and you're interested here, then you're going to need to know just how generous the brand's been with the standard equipment. So let's take a look at that right now. All i4 models come with LED headlights, acoustic glazing, LED tail lamps, auto headlamps and wipers, power folding heated mirrors and the usual BMW driving mode setup with its Comfort, Eco Pro and Sport settings. Uh, these can activate different fake engine noises from the included Iconic Sounds electric system. Uh, the brand has standardised its lovely welcome light carpet which illuminates the ground around the front doors uh, when you either get into the car or step out of it at night. And there's loads of help too for slotting this car into tight bays. Not only all-round parking sensors and a reversing camera, but also a parking assistant, which will automatically steer you into parallel or perpendicular spaces. Annoyingly though, a space saver spare wheel isn't available and run flat tires can't be had either. Inside every i4 you get a stitched Sensatec man-made leather dashboard covering uh, plus a leather stitched multifunction steering wheel, cruise control, ambient lighting, velour floor mats, uh, split folding rear seats and an anti-dazzle rear view mirror. Uh, unlike many of its EV rivals, BMW also includes a charging cable for a domestic plug as well as one for a garage wall box or charging station use. You'll want to know about infotainment and media stuff too, and there's lots of that. Uh, let's start with the fact that all i4 models get the full BMW Live Cockpit Plus BMW Operating System 8 package, which gives you a 12.3 inch instrument display, which is paired with a 14.9 inch center dash control display, uh, the latter maintained by remote software upgrades. The central screen is your access point for a cloud-based BMW Maps navigation system, uh, Bluetooth with audio streaming, 4G LTE connectivity, uh, DAB tuner, and a 
decent quality six speaker, 100 watt BMW stereo speaker system. Uh, the car's BMW operating system eight setup also includes the latest version of the brand's clever intelligent personal assistant. Uh, with this, naturally formulated spoken instructions can be used to do things like adjust the air conditioning, uh, open a window, or operate the sunroof if you have one. Uh, selected driver assistance systems can also be voice controlled. The other standard media package inclusion that your dealer will want to tell you about on this car is called Connected Package Pro and that gives you a whole range of media connectivity services although only for three years uh, after that you'll have a subscription to pay. Uh, now as you would want and expect in this day and age uh, these services include wireless Apple CarPlay and also Android Auto smartphone mirroring uh, but there's a great deal more besides. Uh, some of the other connected package professional features uh, these include real-time traffic information. Now this supplies uh, details about the location and the duration of any delays that you might encounter on your journey. Uh, there's remote services which helps you to locate your car if you've gone and forgotten where you parked it and it can also remotely lock or unlock the doors from wherever you happen to be. Uh, plus there is too a concierge service feature. Now this will connect you to a BMW call center agent who is available as an around the clock assistant for uh, pretty much any questions that you might have about your car or the journey as you drive it. Uh, there's also connected parking. Now this offers multi-story and on-street parking information in selected UK and European cities. Uh, BMW Maps, this allows you to send destinations uh, to your car from your home or office PC. And there's also an in-car experiences package. Now this adapts the interior ambiance to your mood. Uh, the Connected Package Professional Pack also includes connected music. Now this offers uh, unlimited streaming of millions of songs from Spotify. As would now be expected from the brand, i4 customers additionally get a full suite of BMW connected drive services. Uh, now these include teleservices. Uh, now this can send you service appointments and vehicle specific service data. Uh, there's BMW suite of online services. Uh, this will give you access to things like news reports, uh, weather forecasts, and a whole range of BMW apps and intelligent functionalities, which learn your habits for greater journey and comfort and can read out your text messages to you. Uh, talking of being connected, all i4 owners will be offered use of a clever My BMW app. Now this can learn your mobility routines, it can read your calendar, and it can even prompt you when to leave for scheduled journeys. Uh, it'll get uh, rather familiar with your most frequently traveled routes and it will memorize them as future destinations. Uh, it even has a share live trip status feature which allows the driver to share their current location and their time of arrival with business partners, friends or with family. Enough with items standard across the range, uh, let's take some time now to look at the things that differentiate the various trim levels. Uh, the main visual differentiator with base sport spec being the 18 inch double spoke bicolor alloy wheels. Uh, inside with sport spec, you'll get upholstery in a mixture of cloth and Sensatec man-made leather. Uh, you're more likely though to want this test car's more dynamic looking M Sport spec which swaps out the base model's rims for uh, 18 inch M aerodynamic bicolor alloys and features M Sport exterior styling which includes revised bumpers front and rear and an M Sport spoiler. Uh, the interior of M Sport models uh, that's marked out by a grippier M Sport steering wheel, uh, an anthracite headliner 2 driver's backrest width adjustment, uh, blue stitched Alcantara seat upholstery inserts and aluminium rhombical interior trim, plus an extended storage pack which gives you an additional front seat stowage area, an extra 12 volt socket and nets for the boot and the front seat backs. 
As you expect, the M Performance M50 model gets its own bespoke trim package. Uh, visually, they're differentiated by 19-inch M double-spoke bicolor wheels, plus individual lights, shadow line exterior trim, and standard metallic paint. The M50 also gets M Sport brakes, variable sport steering, and M adaptive suspension, plus an extra sport boost mode, which temporarily adds 68 horsepower for push-to-pass overtaking. Inside with the M50, as well as the usual M Sport features, there's real Vanaska leather upholstery, uh, M Sport seat belts, and there's a heat pump too, which is installed for greater efficiency with the air conditioning. Let's get back though to the mainstream models and talk about options. Uh, your dealer is going to want you, first of all, to consider the various extra cost packages available. Uh, the popular Comfort Back gives you steering wheel heating and comfort access keyless entry. Now this gives the opportunity for the tailgate to be operated by a wave of your foot beneath the bumper. That's very useful for those times uh, when you're approaching the car, uh, key in pocket, but laden down with bags. You might also want to consider the Comfort Plus Pack. Uh, that will give you both those things, plus powered adjustment, memory settings, and lumbar support for the front seats. And there's also a visibility pack. Now that gives you blue accented uh, laser light headlights with a high beam assistant. Uh, that gives you a beam range of 600 meters. If budget permitted, uh, we'd also want the technology pack. Now that includes BMW's large and informative head-up display, a wireless charging mat, and an audio upgrade, which will give you the Harman Kardon surround sound audio system. Uh, to these three items, the Alternative uh, Technology Plus Pack, that adds a portfolio of three further key features, and you'll want those if you're gonna enjoy all the technology that this i4 model has to offer. Now firstly, uh, there's the Parking Assistant Plus, remote 3D view surround view camera system with surround view, uh, panorama view, and 3D view options, which together create a 360 degree image of the vehicle and its surroundings. Uh, also included is a remote 3D function, which allows you to call up a three-dimensional live image of your car and its immediate vicinity on your smartphone. Uh, the integrated cameras which deliver all of that, uh, they're also employed in another clever feature, uh, and that is the brand's drive recorder. Now this is a bit like a dash cam uh, using inbuilt cameras to record video footage from different points around the vehicle uh, before storing that footage uh, as event and crash recordings so they can be either watched later on the control display or exported via the USB port. Our recordings can be up to 40 seconds in length for accident playback you'll get 20 seconds before the impact and the 20 seconds after it. And finally, the Technology Plus Pack also includes what BMW calls its Driving Assistant Professional Pack. Uh, this gives you a whole range of extra camera-based driving assistant and safety features. Now we're gonna cover those off for you in just a few minutes. Staying on optional packs, if you choose the M Sport trim level, you'll be offered the option of upgrading to the M Sport Pro Pack we have here. Uh, that basically makes an eDrive i4 model look like the top M50. The M Sport Pro Pack gets you larger 19-inch M Y-spoke by color jet black alloy wheels, plus individual lights shadow line trim, extended high gloss shadow line exterior trim, uh, M Sport brakes with red or blue calipers, M Sport seat belts, and sun protection glass. What about individual options across the range? Oh, well, it's disappointing to have to pay extra for things like a wireless charging mat, driver's seat lumbar support, and sun protection glass, but they're all there on the extras list. As individual options, you can also add in an electric glass sunroof, a heated steering wheel, uh, the Harman Kardon audio system upgrade that we mentioned earlier on, and also the parking assistant plus and drive recorder technology features that we just talked about. Uh, you might well want a tow bar too. Uh, M50 customers, they're offered an M carbon exterior styling package and a stitched real leather dashboard covering. Plus there's optional carbon fiber, piano black or aluminum cabin trim and soft merino leather upholstery. 
As for aesthetics, well, bear in mind, if you're going for an E-Drive model, unless you want your i4 painted in solid Alpine white, that's the only standard color, you'll be paying your dealer more for one of the available metallic colors. This test car's Brooklyn gray finish is one of those. Uh, you can change wheel sizes up to 19 inches for better looks or down to 17 inches for greater EV mileage. As for the interior trim, well, there's the no cost option of aluminum mesh effect trim inlays, and you can get the instrument panel coated in blue stitched Sensitec man-made leather too. Uh, you might also want to know that on the Sport and M Sport models, uh, you can pay extra for Vanaska leather upholstery uh, that comes in a choice of three colors and they have special decorative quilting and seam patterns. On to safety, which is pretty well accounted for, but not enough to get this car the coveted Euro NCAP five star rating. Uh, the i4 was instead given four stars. All variants get what the brand calls the Active Guard Plus system, and that's based around front collision warning technology. And this can detect the presence of cyclists as well as vehicles and pedestrians. Uh, at over 30 miles an hour, the vehicle scans the road ahead for potential accident hazards. And if one's detected, then you'll be warned and the brakes will be preconditioned for maximum effectiveness. If you happen to be traveling at under 30 miles an hour and you're not responding to a detected hazard, uh, then the brakes will automatically be applied and that reduces the severity of any resulting accident and it hopefully alleviates it altogether. Uh, Active Guard Plus also includes lane departure warning with lane return. Uh, that stops dozy drivers from veering over lane delineating lines on the highway and it will intervene with light steering assistance to ease the car back to where it ought to be. Plus there's traffic sign recognition and an alertness assistant which monitors you for signs of drowsiness. As you'd expect, all the usual passive safety items feature, including twin front side and curtain airbags. If inflated, these activate the BMW emergency call with teleservices system, uh, which in an accident can automatically alert the emergency services. Now the system not only gives them your exact GPS location, but it also provides recovery personnel with information on your speed at point of impact, how hard the seat belts were pulled, how many airbags burst and so on. So if you were to have a crash, it would all mean not only that the uh, emergency teams would know exactly where you were, but also that they would uh, arrive on the scene more prepared and more ready to get you to safety than they could ever otherwise be. And that is a potentially life-saving difference. Uh, the setup has been designed to also automatically activate after low speed collisions below the threshold for airbag deployment. Immediately after that impact, it will flash up an iDrive screen message uh, offering to contact BMW's accident assistance service directly. Other passive safety features include front and rear ISOFIX charge seat fastenings and the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control, primarily DSC Plus stability control and DTC traction control. Uh, there's plenty of braking peace of mind too, with the ABS system supplemented by fading compensation, CBC, which is cornering brake control, and a neat brake drying system, which keeps the brake discs free of moisture in wet weather. Uh, panic stops, they're aided by a brake assist system, and they're advertised to following motorists by dynamic brake lights that flash a bright warning. Uh, you also get a multi-collision braking function too. Uh, in the event of an impact, that will keep brake pressure applied until you come to a complete stop. And a performance control torque vectoring system. Now that improves agility by varying the drive torque through the rear wheels depending on conditions. In addition, there is a trailer stabilization function too, and that'll stop trailer sway if you have a trailer fitted and hill start assistant that stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. If you want to go further, you'll have invested in the Technology Plus pack we mentioned earlier on, and that includes what BMW calls its Driving Assistant Professional Pack. Uh, this gives you a whole range of extra camera-based safety features, so let's talk you through those. 
Uh, now, firstly, there's active cruise control with stop and go and approach control warning. Uh, this is able to tell you if you're getting too close to the car in front. Uh, next, there's an automatic speed limit assist feature, which uses the car's camera-driven traffic sign recognition capability to automatically set the car's speed limiter to the prevailing speed limit. Uh, crossing traffic warning front, that alerts you to oncoming vehicles if you're coming frontwards out of a parking space or trying to edge out of a junction and you can't completely see the traffic that's coming at you from either side. And cross road warning, uh, that's there to alert you about traffic coming at you from the sides at a crossroads. As the name suggests, wrong way warning makes a massive fuss if you forget yourself and end up going the wrong way down a one way street. The other remaining driving assistant professional pack features are equally worth having. There's an evasion aid, which gives you extra steering assistance in critical situations where it's still possible to avoid an accident. Uh, say for example, someone suddenly pulls out uh, right in front of you, or you suddenly have to make a rather dramatic lane change to avoid slow moving traffic. Uh, the Driving Assistant Professional Pack also includes an emergency stop assistant uh, that will sense if you've uh, suddenly become incapacitated while you're driving, uh, say for example after a heart attack. Uh, having checked to see that you are indeed unresponsive, uh, your BMW will then automatically slow down the car, put on its hazard flashes and manoeuvre you gently to the side of the road. It's all very reassuring. Finally, we'll also mention that uh, the Driving Assistant Professional Pack also includes three features that together give this car a limited level two standard of autonomous driving capability. For highway use, there's a lane keeping assist with active side collision protection. Uh, there's lane change warning and a steering and lane control assistant both of which use light steering intervention to keep you where you ought to be on the road away from other vehicles. In our driving section, we gave you the headline i4 range figure up to 365 miles on a charge. That's with this eDrive 40 model's 81.5 kilowatt hour battery, but you'll need base sport trim to achieve that. Bear in mind that with uh, M Sport trim, that figure falls to a best of 352 miles. And using the same battery, the all-wheel drive M50 flagship model manages a best of 318 miles. The base eDrive 35 variant's smaller 67 kilowatt hour battery is restricted to a best of 299 miles. On this test in this uh, eDrive 40 M Sport model, we've been regularly getting uh, 15 to 20% less than the quoted figures. Uh, that is par for the course though with most EVs these days. If, as is likely, you're looking at this mid-range eDrive 40 variant, then we'll give you some class perspective for comparable rear-driven segment rivals. A Ford Mustang Mach-E goes 273 miles, a Tesla Model 3 uh, manages 305 miles, a Kia EV6, uh, that's 328 miles, a uh, Hyundai Ioniq 6 manages 338 miles, and a long-range Polestar 2, uh, 395 miles. So this BMW does look competitive, but to get anywhere near the quoted figures or anywhere near BMW's quoted consumption rates, uh, supposed to be 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour for this eDrive 40, you'll have to regularly select the uh, provided B gear ratio and the screen selectable high brake regeneration setting. Outright range is of course only part of the equation, uh, with charging speed being equally important, uh, in fact if not more so for those regularly covering long distances. Um, BMW hasn't designed this i4 around the kind of advanced 800 volt electrical architecture that's favoured by some rivals. Uh, that allows use of the latest breed of ultra rapid public chargers, but this car's 400 volt setup allows battery replenishment at up to 205 kilowatts DC, delivering a 10 to 80% charge in 31 minutes and adding a little over 100 miles in 10 minutes at a high power charger. Uh, the charging speed is available on both the eDrive 40 and M50 models, although the eDrive 35 sees that drop to 180 kilowatt DC. However, because of that base version's smaller battery capacity, charging on the go takes virtually no longer than with the larger battery models. 
The BMW scores moderately well in charging speeds compared to rivals. Uh, the Polestar is only able of adding charge at up to 150 kilowatts DC, uh, while Tesla can take 250 kilowatts DC, and Hyundai's 800 volt system uh, that takes the title at 275 kilowatts DC, and that allows for a 10 to 80 percent charge on the fastest units in just 18 minutes. The i4, like many of its rivals, can charge it up to 11 kilowatts AC at home, in public, or at the workplace, and that puts charging times at 13 hours on a 7.4 kilowatt home wall box. Uh, that drops to eight and a half hours on an 11 kilowatt plus unit. It's 10 hours 45 minutes on a 7.4 kilowatt home wall box for the eDrive 35 version. Charging at home costs around £28 for a full top-up. At the time of filming, uh, that's based on a 35p per kilowatt hour tariff, although there are plenty of uh, EV-specific home energy tariffs uh, that could see that figure more than halved. On the road, a charge on a high power point at 65 pence per kilowatt hour, that'll cost around £37 for a 10 to 80% charge. On delivery of your i4, you'll be given a BMW charging card that entitles you to special tariffs operated by the BMW charging network. Uh, that, in turn, connects you into one of the world's largest public charging networks, uh, all of it accessible using just that RFID card, or if you'd prefer, uh, a provided app. In this country, you'll be able to use charge points operated by BP Pulse, ESB, Osprey, uh, Source London, ChargePoint Network UK and others. High power charging stations via the Ionity network, they're also part of the BMW charging network. At the time of this test combined, uh, this gave i4 drivers access to over 8,500 AC and 1,500 DC charging points across the UK, plus a further 162,000 AC and 11,000 DC charging points across Europe. Finding all these stations is aided by the cloud-based BMW Maps navigation system, which, uh, once you've input your route, will give you recommendations for charging stops, uh, plus the ability to filter search results by fast charging points, and even information on points of interest which are near to charging stations, uh, should your passengers wish to take a stroll while you're plugged in. There's no subscription fee for the first 12 months of charging, uh, even for the Ionity and the BP Pulse packages, uh, which will then cost around £11 and £8 respectively at the time of filming after the first year of ownership. Uh, those who regularly cover long distances will be wise to get that Ionity pack because it drops the charging costs on the high power units to 26 pence per kilowatt hour, and that cuts costs on those points by almost a third. What else? Well, the i4 needs servicing every two years or 20,000 miles, and it'll cost less to maintain than a BMW with an internal combustion engine. Uh, the brand offers i-service plans, which at the time of uh, filming here started from £460 and cover all maintenance and servicing work which might be needed for the length of that plan. A three-year unlimited mileage warranty is included on the car, as with all BMW models, and the drive battery gets an eight-year 100,000-mile warranty. Uh, that is pretty standard for the electric car market. Insurance groups, uh, they come in at 36 for the eDrive 40 we're testing here, which is significantly lower than the Tesla Model 3's 48 to 250, but matches the 36 to 44 groups for the Polestar 2 range and the 36 to 41 groups for the Hyundai Ioniq 6. Residual values, they're strong around the 60% level after three years and 12,000 miles a year. A comparable Polestar 2, for example, is almost identical. Then there are the usual electric car benefits. Taxation is at the lowest rates around, uh, based on the zero tailpipe emissions concept, although of course there are emissions linked to the car's production uh, and likely energy used. VED, or car tax, is set at zero for electric cars, and company car tax is at the lowest rate, at 2% BIK. With both those figures, as well as free entry to the London congestion charge zone, applicable until 2025. 
That low BIK rate is a big incentive to switch to electric uh, with the i4 eDrive 40 variant we're testing here, costing around £500 a year in company car tax for a 40% taxpayer. A BMW 330e plug-in hybrid, a smaller car with less power, that would cost more than £2,200 for the same driver. So that makes you think a bit, doesn't it? Finally, some eco observations uh, over an ownership period of 125,000 miles. BMW claims that the i4 eDrive 40 will have a 45% lower global warming potential than that of a comparable diesel 3 or 4 series model. And the brand is seeking to enhance the sustainability of its supply chain and increase its use of recycled materials for the i4 as well. All of which will help to cut production emissions by 18%. The i4 sets new standards for drive dynamics in the mid-sized EV segment, but the combustion-orientated chassis, which allows it to do that, compromises practicality and rear seat space. If that's not an issue, and you don't mind paying a touch more than expected for your mid-sized premium badge EV, then there's a lot to like here. We can't really see why you'd compromise with the smaller battery eDrive 35 version or why you'd really need the manic performance of the top M50 variant, which leaves this mid-level eDrive 40 model offering the sweet spot in the range. It is a pity that BMW hasn't invested in the 800 volt architecture, which does feature in some rivals for ultra rapid charging, but battery charging speeds are very competitive by 400 volt system standards. The challenge now is for BMW to replicate the engaging handling on offer here as part of the bespoke Neue Klasse EV chassis, which will be used in the brand's future electric models. What we need from them is what we've got from this i4, which feels like a BMW to the core, from its rear biased drive system to the style of the panel work and the iDrive cleverness of the interior. Previously, if you loved BMWs, but you needed an EV, you really needed to buy something else. Now, the Munich maker has your number, and this might well be it. Music